when we think about it, Nick, right, we've t- been working together on this for going on a year, you and I, and but but bro- more broadly, right, in Nokia, uh, this topic, this issue of, of network security, more specifically what we now call quantum safe networks, uh, is all about a, a threat that's been emerging for some time, and uh, and yet Nokia is not a newcomer to to the topic, and uh, so I don't know. Maybe we should let's talk a little bit about uh, about the quantum threat. What's your sort of high level thought, really, on on what the quantum threat is and what it really means to uh, to network operators? And then I can I can give a few thoughts too. You know, we've talked about this uh, with the team. It you know, it's all about strengthening our digital infrastructures and our digital economy because you know over the over the recent uh, years you know we've seen this continual digital transformation digital economy the rapid growth i think the you know the world economic forum or somebody's talking about um, digital economy growth for 30 percent over the the next five years so it's there so i think if we are going to build on this economy or whatever, we kind of really need to address the, you know, the, the foundational aspects of this. And really, yeah. if we take a look back, you know, we, we've grown this economy based upon fundamentally a single layer of cryptography. All right. And that secures our digital infrastructure. It secures our digital economy we've had this growth it's been secure but really if we look at it the foundation of that growth is very fragile if we really take a take a look at it so i think you know we've come a point a uh, point in time now with this quantum threat or one could say quantum opportunity where we now have moved from a hypothetical where we had this fragile security that served us well with the with the emergence of quantum computing, it kind of changes the paradigm a bit. Now it's you know, uh, CRQCs or quantum relevant cryptographically relevant quantum computers acronym again. Um, we see a path now to them actually breaking the mathematical based algorithms that are the, this this foundation. And the point that we have is, you know. Threat actors are not going to tell you when they've compromised your codes. So, you know, we're at this point. But I think the main thing is we've realized it. So now is the time to move forward, to take steps and take actions. So, you know, I suppose that's the way I'm kind of looking at it you now. It's the opportunity side as much as the threat. It's it. You know, it's interesting, Nick. So I, I, it's been spending the last few days talking to a lot of customers, in particular on the uh, kind of, I'll say, not federal but local government, and by extension, kind of, kind of uh, public safety sector. And in that er- er- area, um, many of those users, network users, really have gone from a place of where their communication was was very voice based, you know, police, fire, EMS, and uh, and they're just as you said, digitalization. They've gone, they've come from basically point to point radio and mobile radio to relying more and more on, you know, digital infrastructure, sometimes meaning cell phones, sometimes meaning other, other types of, uh, uh, digital, uh, communication services. So, okay. Now they've come to a place where they're starting to recognize how much they rely on digitalization and recognizing that there's a threat there if someone steals that information or disrupts it. So, okay, so now they, they, they're looking at encryption and now they're thinking ahead to what's, um, what's the landscape, what's changing there. And it's a, it's a context towards, uh, you know, this thing called Q-Day, the idea that, that as you mentioned, a, a cryptographically relevant quantum computer is starting to become, it believed by many, to be an imminent threat. So maybe in the next, we don't exactly know, five years, could be, could be 10 years, uh, a bad state actor, Will have the ability to break those those older ciphers, and um, and so this is this is a big threat, indeed, an opportunity. Uh, it's a threat from the standpoint that if um, not just not just those you know local or federal kind kind of users, but any any network user uh, needs to be concerned and can take some action that uh, that will protect their infrastructures without you know wholesale rip and replace. 
Yeah, I, so. I, and I and I think that's 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 the good point. I mean, we've got this whole topic of harvest now decrypt later. I mean, but I think I think the point has come for you know the operators, whether they be critical infrastructure, whether they be service providers, to really take a step back and sort of say, assess your network. You know right. what's going on. What information, what types of information are you carrying? You know, what's its sensitivity? What's the longevity? Right. All right. Assess your network and then, you know, work with partners such as Nokia to understand your risk. Take a step back, assess, understand your risk, and then together, you know, build a roadmap. Move forward. As you say, you know, you know um, take, take steps. Like, you know, it doesn't have to be wholesale across the whole, you know, work out what you need to protect um, and how do you move forward.